where the mental focus was. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, um, obviously, we didn't, we didn't start great. Uh, what can you do to kind of, when there is that lack of focus, what can you do to kind of course correct within a quarter? Is there anything? Um, probably just, uh, you know, communication. Uh, trying to refocus, get back to our principles, things like that, um, so that we don't let, you know, it snowball a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That's, uh, that's what you look to stop. You, you know, whenever somebody has a volume of possessions, you don't stop them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for uh, anybody. I mean, Brad, for example, right? He had close to 20, right? Like, so he wasn't stopped. You know what I'm saying? But you can't have Patty Mills come off the bench and give you, and give you 20. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really the game right there. You know what I mean? If Patty Mills didn't have, like, a, a crazy first half and we make our run in the second half, we're tying the game up, you know? And uh, obviously, we have to do much better offensively. Um, but we only they had what 104, right? Mm -hmm. So the defense in general wasn't like horrendous, right? Um, me and Brad have to produce better offense for our team and then obviously collectively as well. When you say it's up to you guys to produce that, is that kind of where the communication comes in just because the spacing was seemed a little off, or what is what can you do? I guess, um, no, I mean. That that just comes from saying like primary and secondary playmakers. That's that's really all I meant by that. There was nothing crazy. I mean, obviously, as a unit, we didn't shoot the ball well. As a unit, our spacing could have been better, like you know, team wise, all the way around. But um, yeah, just just as our job being the backcourt, being the guards, being a primary and secondary playmaker, like you know, we're supposed to do better in that in that respect. How much does their length kind of take away? It's not just driving length, like but maybe aggressiveness to get to the best because we just know we get two seven quarters standing back to it. Well, so again, I mean, I think that it goes back to like just us putting ourselves in better positions. Um, you know, I, Britain's obviously a, a phenomenal team. They're going to be a championship contender again, of course. Um, they're not necessarily like, you know, a defensive juggernaut, though. You know what I mean? So, we we have to do better um just all around like i said they only had 104 like but we scored 80 what 88 90 something like that yeah what can you guys do to get kcp more involved um just just knowing good shots for our, our team right and so if we need to get him off more pin downs and and find him in space then uh that's what we, that's what we got to do chase Hey, Spencer, uh, what did you notice about their approach to, to guarding you individually? And were you at all surprised that Kevin Durant started on you at the beginning of the game? Um, not really, given the lineup that they were uh, bringing out there. Um, I mean, I think just like everybody else right now, they're going to try not to foul, um, not to put people at the line. And, you know, I mean, I would say that was the, the main way uh, they tried to try to guard me. And uh, it's very early, only three games, but um, you're off to a really good start shooting three. And I I'm just wondering, you know, going through the, the rehab that you did, it was a leg injury. Did you spend a, a lot of time shooting early on? And do you think it's maybe an area of game that you could come out of it improved? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously hurt my knee. So, you know, spent a lot of time shooting and, you know, hopefully uh, that improvement continues throughout the season. Um, it's a long season. So I'm not going to, you know, declare myself uh, Kyle Corver or Joe Harris, but, you know, uh, I I want to definitely be improved in that area. Michael. Hey, Spencer. I'm on uh, Zoom, man. It's good to see you. Um, nice. mm -hmm. Just wanted to ask you, obviously, they played the, the tribute for you, and I know you've always touched on how much you enjoyed your time here, but what did it mean for you to, if you got a chance at all, to look up and see the tribute and just being back in Barclays just uh, on the different side of the tunnel for you? Um, it's crazy, you know, this was, this was home for like five years. So, you know, it was, it was a little bit different for sure. Um, still got a lot of friends and family here. Uh, Jersey swap with Joe after the game. That's my guy. Uh, I only caught a piece of the tribute. So hopefully they got it on social media or something so I can watch it. Um, but now overall, it's, it's all love. You know what I mean? I, I appreciate my time here and, and it was, a, it was a great place for me. That's the luck, brother. Thank you. Last question to Neil. 
Spencer, Brad kind of described it as, you know, you can't have the mindset that, oh, you can just turn on a light switch. And that was his message to the team afterwards. I guess, and coach talked about, you know, discipline. How is it, you know, and during a grind of an 82 game season, you know, possible to just always bring it every night? And who does that responsibility fall on? Well, that's the thing. I mean, that, that's the importance of principles and, and the importance of kind of having like the hierarchy and all that other stuff, because then it's not about like, oh, we have to be up here every night or something like that. Like we do what we do, you know, and, and that's the only way you can get through an A2 game season. I think with any good team, you see that, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're less so worried about being gimmicky or, or doing this or doing that. Like, no, they're going to come out. They're going to play their way. They're going to impose their will on the game. And if they have to make adjustments, then they do. But the marker of a good team is being able to do that on a, on a consistent basis and um, never getting too high, never getting too low. Um, and, you know, that's coming from somebody that's been on really bad teams and, and really good ones. You know, when, when you have that consistency of, like, who you are and you play to those strengths and you throw your ace card every night, like, that's, that's what you want to do. So, you know, if we know we need to get – corner threes for Pope or we need to get Brad ISOs or whatever it is, then that's like what we need to be looking to do every night. And, you know, in terms of who that falls on, I mean, the, there has to be a level of character and commitment in, in the locker room as a whole. But then obviously, um, like I said, me and, me and Brad are our other two uh, playmakers on the backcourt, uh, relatively elder statesmen in terms of our roster being, you know, close to 30. Um, and he's a 30 point game scorer in this league. So, you know, first him, second year me, and then, you know, we got to, we just got to do our job. That's it, Spencer. Thank you.